So back, I made a post on the Keeley page uh, about wanting a fuzz pedal, and specific a Keeley fuzz head, which are pretty rare these days. And the reason why I did this is because for many years I have tried many, many fuzz pedals and just could not connect. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, you gotta have a single coil guitar and futz with the volume knob in order to get the specific fuzz sound I have stuck in there. So I make this post. Uh, my friend Dan was like, oh man, I just gave away a fuzz head. <laughs> I wish I would have known. So he sends me uh, to borrow these two fuzz pedals, which is an incredibly kind and uh, friendly thing to do. And uh, just really hit me. It was really nice and I needed something nice to happen because uh, you know how life can get where it's just you feel like a drudgeon <laughs> like yesterday's jam and then someone does something really wonderful and you're like okay I have faith in humanity again so <clears throat> Dan sent me the Foz head it's a very early version um two knobs Thousand head, one switch, silicone and germanium. And he sent me the wolf, of which I can appreciate this name. It's got uh, sustain, tone and level, clipping, germanium or silicone, and on and off for the octave. I plugged these in for a little bit yesterday. I like the fuzz head a little bit more just because it's a little more controllable um the wolf i'm gonna have to spend some more time on because the thing is wild and raucous and crazy um and i'm gonna plug them in and i'm going to play with them and show you uh what i think so before i get started playing with these pedals i'd like to do a quick tour of my rig um it has taken me five or six years to put this together and dial it in and if you're anything like me which most of you are love talking about your rig i've got my baby blue coily cable which i love um i've got my two guitars my heavily modified h150 Thank you, Wade Stark from Wade's Guitar Shop for doing all that crazy work for me. Yes, Baba. Come in. Come. Come in. You can lay down. It's fine. Go ahead. Good girl. 
That's my helper, Wee Woo. She's the best. Anyway, Wade sold me this guitar brand new, and then I, I was like, oh, I want to do stuff to it, but I want it to look stock, because I was crazy back then. He did it, and then I was like, I kind of want a mini humbucker in between the humbuckers, and he was like, okay. And I was like, uh, I want a five-way knob, <laughs> and I want my pickups to be series and parallel, which he did, and I got that cool brass knob, I got those Gretsch knobs, which I like, and the humbuckers, mini humbuckers, the uh, Rickenbacker is stock for now, but can you please be patient, but I have plans for that, I got some Gretsch strap buttons, which I like, instead of strap locks, and I might have that three-way switch turned into a kill switch and turn that fifth knob into a five-way like I have on the Heritage, uh, which I originally picked up the idea from having a PRS. So here we are at the board. You'll notice it's not like your normal boards. It is a Monarch. It's all aluminum, has a flight case, it's got these cool orange dudes that hold the pedals on it. It's got a bit of rubber on the other side, which is replaceable. Um, and I absolutely adore it. It is fantastic. I'll never sell it. Um, however, if you're interested and you want to build your own, I will take photos of everything. I'll take it apart and give you measurements. Uh, nobody's making them right now, so I wouldn't feel bad doing that. And they're so good, I feel like if you have the means to make your own board, you should try and build one like this because they're great. These guys can move up and down. Um, the uh, These ones don't move. Those are stationary, but it is fantastic. And I've got... I don't know if you can see in there, I've got my power supply underneath and room for another pedal. Oftentimes I'll keep the super duper down there or if I have like a tiny compressor and I like to use two compressors, I'll put one down there. Um, for the moment, it's just a power supply. So, I'll start with my input, which I've got two jacks on the back, one for in and one for coming back from the floor, which we'll go over in a second. But uh, so the signal goes in here and then it plugs into the Cali 76 through the whammy, through the wonder filter, and then to the ABY. Um, channel A has a very helpful, oops, channel B. It's got the isolating transformer, 180 degree phase shift, and a ground lift. They come in extremely handy, uh, especially if I go to somewhere else and play and it's noisy you would be surprised how much just a quick ground lift, or in my case, using two amps, the phase shift really helps. Um, so channel A goes to the Petty John lift and through the Super Duper, then into my VHT. It is a standard 18, 18 watts, uh, with a JTM 45 flavored channel and a Marshall TMB circuit uh, Which is the one I use most of the time and um, I've got a tone tubby El Nico red in there Not that the Celestian it came with was a bad speaker. It certainly wasn't but Got the El Nico red and it just sounds fantastic. I really love it All right, so channel B goes from the ABY down to the floor into my wah it's my exotic wah and then my univibe then into the chorus it's JHS Emperor which I use for like lo-fi Leslie sounds it's like right now it's common knowledge but back in the day everyone when you heard like John Schofield or a bunch of other guitar players sounded like they were using a Leslie, but they weren't. And you had to do a little digging. Um, figure out he was using a Boss CE3, maybe? I can't remember. Um, I got this one because it sounded great. It was had the options that I needed. The EQ is really helpful. The volume boost. 
It's also helpful, and while I don't use the three different modes, um, you know, the sine wave, square wave, and triangle wave, I don't know, who knows, at some point in the future I might want to dig into those. It's really awesome. Before I had the chorus, I was using this Moog flanger to get my Leslie sounds, and I promise you, I say this to anyone who will listen, when Moog makes a pedal, it's never just whatever that pedal says it does. It always does just a little bit more. And I don't think they intended for this thing to sound like a Leslie, but when you dial it in just right, um, sounds like a Leslie, at least to me. And I would always play with the rate. Turn it down slow for a slow Leslie, turn it up fast. And because it's that knob, I could make it ramp. Um, you know, I could dial it in the way a Leslie ramps, which is a huge part of how a Leslie pedal sounds like a Leslie, is that it does that ramping thing. Unfortunately, the expression controls the time. And I spoke with somebody about switching it out, but it seemed to be a little bit too complicated for what at that time was an under $100 pedal. When I bought this, nobody was buying them. Moog had stopped making pedals and they were blowing them out, which I thought was insane. And I knew that they were gonna go up in value. I bought a couple of other ones and gave them away as gifts because they were so cheap. It was like 60 bucks. Um, now, of course, they're worth a billion dollars, but I'm happy. Uh, I love giving pedals away when I can. Uh, next is the Paisley Deluxe. This is a Rule of Three pedal. I don't know if you're familiar with the Rule of Three, but uh, if you buy a pedal and sell it three times, the third time you have to keep it. And I have had this twice before and <laughs> sold it because I thought, well, I don't really need it, but I want it. But I want something else more, so you sell it, and then you end up wanting it again because you miss that sound. Well, I love the underdog overdrive sound. I did not love the Paisley channel. Um, channel to the paisley drive and the third time i got it i realized that i could use the paisley drive as a clean boost and that little like voicing i don't know if i can yeah it's the voicing knob really helps it cuts the bass and boosts the upper mids in a way i think i know it cuts the bass um but it just makes it a spectacular clean boost uh, in my rig, for some reason, cutting bass is like the name of the game because my rig is real bassy. And I don't want it to be real bassy because it takes away from all the other frequencies I want to occupy. Um, <clears throat> next, we have the Claymore. Love you, Alex. Miss you a bunch. The Morning Glory, my favorite overdrive pedal. Um, that's also a Rule of Three pedal. The Jam Pedals, Harmonious Monk which is a fantastic harmonic tremolo, but what a lot of folks don't know is that it also does a box style tremolo and a Fender style tremolo, and it is really good at that. And while it doesn't have MIDI, so you can't like switch between the three when, when you've got it on a regular board, um, I keep it up here and I can adjust and dial in as I please. It makes it real easy to use and I love it. Next is uh, another Rule of Three pedal, that's the Echoplex Delay. I've gone through every fancy tape style delay without actually owning one. And the Echoplex does it best for me. And what I especially like is that like tape damage feature when you hold down the volume button and the red light turns on and you can dial in how much tape damage you want. I don't know what that's what they call it, but that's what I call it. Uh, then after that we go, right now on my desk I've got the Delay Llama from Jam Pedals. And then it goes into the Looper, and then into the PD Classic 50. These amps are getting some attention lately because they are fantastic. Uh, and people seem to like forget that, especially this one is from the early 90s person I got it from worked in a music store and bought it because it just was big and sounded great and um, now it belongs to me and I love it and it is it's big it's heavy as hell it's got two 12 inch speakers in it but it's loud and it's clean and it takes pedals really well so that is my rig and um, 
Now on to figuring out how I'm going to plug in these fuzz pedals.